Hi, this is John. I've come back to that field where it was ripped when the soil was very dry. And you can see they've put a roller over it now, which has broken down a lot of the clods that were here. So it's getting closer to what might be possible to plant into, but still there's a lot of clods. And when you look at the soil closely, it looks like there's good aggregation of this clay. This is quite a clay soil. Um, again, that's partly because of the very dry soil. It's very hard to break these clods. They, they're so solid um, because it's so dry. So these little aggregations, uh, you might think that's good. But what I'd like to show you is when I get back to my house, uh, we'll do a little experiment to see how stable these clods actually are. Now very close to where that uh, ripped field is on this farm, there's a little experiment where in this particular spot there's been a rotation of maize and sun hemp, zero till. And I just want to show you what the soil looks like here. If we pull away the soil, you can see the stover from the maize in the previous season. Um, the, actually, this is not uh, sun hemp that's here, it's um, uh, radish of sorts. Okay, so now you can see the soil, not a lot of litter exactly on the surface, it's broken down quite a lot. But I want to just dig up a little bit of this soil to look at the aggregation and then do the same experiment on this as we did over there. The soil is also very dry of course this time of year. We'll dig up a bit of this, it's quite, um, quite hard and dry as you would expect. But these aggregates that we're pulling out collect these and we'll have a look at them as well. Here are the two samples that I took from the fields this morning. The one on the right is from the area that was ripped and rolled and the one on the left is from the Zeratol maize cover crop rotation. Now I think the first observation you can make is the one on the right is lighter colored than the one on the left. So the ripped and rolled is lighter and the zero tool rotation is darker. That would indicate to me that the zero tool has a higher organic matter content in the soil than the ripped and rolled field. The next thing I'd like to illustrate is the hardness of these little clods. So if I take a clod from, from this ripped and it's very hard to break, okay? And when it breaks, it doesn't really break into nice aggregates. It just sort of snaps open. So it is hard. Whereas if I take this one from the zero tool, it opens up very easily. And you can see the root matter in there. The aggregates are nice. And uh, it just looks a lot better inside that soil then on this side which you break up there's one or two roots but it's got really no kind of structure in there at all it's just a, a collapsed mass of soil now i'm going to put uh, some of these small crumbs into this water and hopefully you will see what will happen when you put it in so this is the ripped and you see how quickly it's collapsing Try and take a close-up of that. Okay, let me put this in here. And you see how quickly it starts to just collapse and fall apart. Now you imagine that when the rain comes going to happen to the soil, it's just going to collapse and as it collapses the pore spaces will be closed up with that clay and the soil will become sealed 
and the infiltration capacity and the root penetration capacity will decrease. Now let's look at the soil on the left. This is from the zero till area. Put that in there and let's see what happens to that. Okay, so if you look closer, that aggregate is stable. That aggregate is, is not collapsing. Immediately anyway, it might slowly disintegrate. But now we've had it in there for quite a long time. And it's still maintaining its aggregate shape. Let me put another one in next to that one. Again, it's remaining very stable. This is called aggregate stability. And it just shows that when you don't till the soil, you maintain the roots in the soil, you allow the or organic matter to build up in the soil, the soil organisms grow and develop and they create this stable aggregate, which is good for your soil. It's a sign of soil health. Now if I pick up one from the, the ripped area and put this next to these and just compare. Look at that, how it just collapses and falls apart. So this little test is a very simple way to evaluate the soil health. If your soil is like on the left there, which retains its aggregate stability in water, for a fairly long time, that's an indication of good soil health. On the right, where it just collapses, that's an indication that your soil is in bad shape. It's got no stability, it's got very little aggregates, and the organic matter is very low. And that soil will just collapse in rain, compact, and make it difficult for plants to grow. What is the solution to solving a soil health problem like that we've seen where it's been heavily tilled and the organic matter has basically declined seriously? Well, the first is to reduce your tillage. The second is to get soil cover with mulch. A third option is to grow cover crops. And here are a number of options of cover crops, grasses, buckwheat, radishes, turnips, legumes and there are various indigenous and temperate leg legumes that can be used um, depending on the season. Uh, here we've got some faba beans, field peas, again buckwheat and this is common vetch. Another option would be hairy vetch. So there are many options on your cover crops. These would be grown at any time of the year, depending on your water availability, then terminated either with mowing or crimping, and then planting into that mulch with a zero till planter, your cash crop, whether that's maize, soybeans, cotton, whatever. And then minimizing traffic on that field to reduce compaction and at harvest leaving the mulch the, the residues on the field so these are the options there are many options to improve soil health and as we have seen improving soil health will make a difference to your soil obviously and contribute to your yields of your cash crops so thank you for watching